Today on Engineering Newswire, we're designing hyperspectral sensors, creating little lenses for security cameras, and making a real Iron Man suit for US Special Forces. Awesome. The US Special Forces may soon be getting a real life Iron Man suit. And although they're not quite at that level, they are closer than you might think. The Tactical Assault Light Operations Suit Project is being coordinated through the Special Operations Command Headquarters, but the team is turning to professional engineers, students, and even what they described as local garage tinkerers. This approach is novel to the Department of Defense, who have even looked to Twitter to find new talent. But with the potential to display real-time battlefield information, enhanced visuals, and users' vital signs, in addition to providing complete bulletproof protection, the more minds the better. Other features, which have only become possible recently, may include a liquid armor exoskeleton and smart fabrics that could help stop hemorrhaging in case of injury. The biggest challenge so far has been making the suit light and comfortable for the soldiers. One invention that has already been used by the military and may be adapted for the new suit is a personal thermal protection system that uses cold water and tubes to keep the user cool. So far, the battery pack for this system and the exoskeleton have been the biggest weight challenges. And while the project does still seem like a plot for a movie, prototypes are expected as early as June. But they're not planning on flying anytime soon. <laughs> French researchers have developed a new one millimeter thick, ultra thin lens that could pave the way to making smaller and cheaper heat sensing imagers. The team found a way to make a thermal infrared camera with a lens made of silicon with less than four millimeters in useful diameter. Although the resolution is not superb, the new Fresno lens is good enough to reveal a presence of a person and some general features. General features? Seems uh, like a bit of a reach there. Yeah, just cloudy ghosts. The IR camera has a wide 130 degree field of view and an F number of 1.5. That means it performs well in low light conditions. It is also effective over a wide range of infrared light wavelengths from seven to 14 micrometers, which are highly sensitive to differences in temperature. According to the researchers, the thin lens design could be a breakthrough in lowering the cost of thermal infrared camera lenses by using materials that are cheaper than traditional ones, such as germanium and calcogenide. The imager could lead to more affordable surveillance, particularly in home use. Let's see that photo again. I know that I've seen that guy somewhere. Wait. <laughs> Please, don't hurt me. Don't be afraid. No! <laughs> yeah, that's him. Excellus's new long wave infrared or LWR hyperspectral or HIS sensor provides real time information about the composition of gases and solids. With the ability to point in multiple directions, the LWR HIS sensor can detect improvised explosive devices or leaks emanating from containers and pipelines used in a variety of industries from oil and gas to chemical manufacturing and nuclear power, among others. According to Excellus, LWIR sensors must be cooled using a cry cooler to temperatures significantly below zero degrees Fahrenheit. At these temperatures, the sensor is sensitive enough to detect and identify small amounts of gas released into the atmosphere, as well as solid materials on the ground. Most HIS sensors are mounted to aircraft such that the platform is required to fly directly over a target to collect imagery. With a system housed in a gimbal that can be pointed in multiple directions, the sensor can collect larger areas of imagery pointing both directly down to the ground and across the horizon. The system is also suitable for mid-sized to large manned and unmanned systems with its onboard processing capability. Its material identification system enables fast data collection without the users being put into harm's way. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm David Manti and this has been your Engineering Newswire.